You are listening to KS3 podcast. This is a short, crisp, concise, exam-oriented, edited editorial for civil services aspirants. In this podcast, we are going to talk about India's 2025 ethanol blending target. Source for the content is Tanvi Deshpande's article for India Spend. For India to meet its target of 20% ethanol blended in petrol by the year 2025, commonly known as the E20 target, it will have to bring in more land under cultivation of feedstock agricultural products that can be converted into ethanol, land that can be better utilized for the generation of renewable energy and for furthering India's electric vehicles adoption program. according to a new report by the Institute for Energy Economics and Financial Analysis besides the ethanol target will not reduce earth warming emissions drastically it may be detrimental to india's food security and will only help us inch towards energy security experts say now let's talk about the pros and cons ethanol can be blended into petrol to reduce the quantity of petrol required to run a vehicle thus reducing dependency on imported costly and polluting petroleum today india imports 85% of its oil requirements India's net import of petroleum was 185 million tons in 2020 to 2021 at a cost of 551 billion dollars according to a roadmap for ethanol blending released by Niti Aayog most of the petroleum products are used in transportation and therefore the E20 program can save the country 4 billion dollars that is 30000 crore rupees annually besides ethanol is a less polluting fuel and offers equivalent efficiency at a lower cost than petrol availability of large arable land rising production of uh, food grains and sugar cane leading to surpluses availability of technology to produce ethanol from plant based resources and the feasibility of making vehicles compliant to ethanol blended petrol are some of the supporting arguments used in the roadmap for e20 which refers to the target as not only in national imperative but also an important strategic requirement however Increasing production of food-based feedstock for ethanol manufacturing may not be the best use of land in a hungry country IE EFA contends in their ranked 101 of 116 countries on the world hunger index 2021 further land can be used far more efficiently for generating renewable power for electric vehicles than for growing crops for ethanol For example, you need 187 hectares worth of uh, maize derived ethanol to match the annual travel distance of an EV recharged from 1 hectare of solar energy even accounting for losses from electricity transmission, battery charging and grid storage stated the IEEFA report authored by Charles Waringham an Australia based independent researcher independent experts also believe that existing ethanol production based on surpluses or damaged food grains can be maintained at status quo or at E10 that is 10% ethanol blended petrol but the E20 target may be a misplaced priority for india now what consumers gain and what they lose Ethanol is one of the principal biofuels naturally produced by the fermentation of sugars by yeasts or by petrochemical processes. In India, it is primarily produced from sugarcane based raw materials or certain types of heavy molasses, sugarcane juice or sugar or sugar syrup, surplus rice available with the Food Corporation of India and maize. These are known as the first generation biofuels. Since the beginning of the EBP program in 2003, average blending ranged only in the 0.1% to 1.5% range up to 2013 to 2014. The Niti Aayog lists a number of interventions by the government post that period, including eased tender conditions, an interest subvention scheme, a financial support scheme for distilleries, for augmentation of production capacity and more, owing to which average ethanol blending in the country reached 5% in ethanol all supply year 2019 to 2020 and esy is from december of a given year to november of the next year in esy 2021 to 2022 india has achieved 9.45% ethanol blending as on 13th of march 2022 The Ministry of Petroleum and Natural Gas aims to take this to 10% in ESY 2021 to 2022 and in December 2020 the government advanced its target of achieving 20% blending from 2030 to 2025 but this target comes with challenges Ethanol can be used in vehicles calibrated to that particular degree of ethanol blending or in flex fuel vehicles that can run on pure fossil fuel or fossil fuels blended with any degree of biofuels 
There's a long way for vehicles to be E20 compatible. Vehicles made in India since 2008 are material compatible with E10 and fuel efficient compliant with E5, that is 5% ethanol blended in petrol, but their engines are not tuned to E10 for optimum performance. At the next stage, when E10 petrol is made available across the country, new vehicles will need engine modifications. Besides, when using E20, there is an estimated loss of 6-7% to fuel efficiency for four-wheelers which are originally designed for regular petrol and calibrated for E10, 3-4% to loss for two-wheelers designed for regular unblended petrol and calibrated for E10, and 1-2% to loss for four-wheelers designed for E10 and calibrated for E20. To offset this, the government might have to uh, consider tax incentives on E10 and E20 fuel. Also, the cost of flex fuel vehicles would be 17,000 to 25,000 rupees higher, and of two wheel flex fuel vehicles, 5,000 to 12,000 rupees higher compared to ordinary vehicles tailored to run on 100% gasoline. The cost of E20 compatible vehicles is also expected to be higher by 3,000 to 5,000 rupees for four wheelers and 1,000 to 2,000 rupees for two wheelers. This level of modification and calibration of vehicles will require large scale investment in infrastructure. Now let's talk about E20 target impacting food, water and security. The Niti Aayog has estimated an ethanol demand of 10.16 billion litres by 2025 based on the expected growth of vehicles. The current ethanol production capacity in India of 4.26 billion litres derived from molasses-based distilleries and 2.58 billion litres from grain-based distilleries is proposed to be expanded to 7.6 billion litres and 7.4 billion litres respectively. This will require 6 million metric tonne of sugar and 16.5 million metric tonne of grains per per annum by ESY 2025. The IEEFA report translates this as 30,000 additional square kilometers of land to come under maize cultivation. With half that land, IEEFA estimates India can generate clean electricity by 2050. Using one hectare of land for solar power generation is far more efficient than using the same land for cultivation of any of the agricultural ethanol feedstocks. For example, an EV charged from solar energy generated on one hectare of land can drive 32 times further than an EV running on ethanol derived from one hectare of sugarcane. The difference is even higher for other feedstocks. Use of land on this scale to grow crops for ethanol production is questionable considering India's food security concerns. The fact that sugarcane is a water guzzling crop and that availability of damaged or surplus grains is uncertain. For example, on an average, um, one ton of sugar cane can produce 100 kilograms of sugar and 70 liters of ethanol. Cultivation of each kilograms of sugar requires 1,600 to 2,000 liters of water. Hence, one liter of ethanol from sugar requires about 2,860 liters of water. That's it for this podcast. Thank you so much for listening. To join KSJ India courses and to crack the ICE exam, visit ksjindia.com. You can also get a PDF of this podcast on ksjindia.com. Thanks for listening.